and I will show you how to perform eigenvalue decompositions in MATLAB. In this section, you will learn how to carry out matrix decompositions in MATLAB. We will see how we can use eigenvalue decomposition to obtain the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for a matrix in order to accurately rank sports teams. We will also see how the eigenvalue decomposition helps us to calculate powers of a matrix. We will then see how taking matrix exponentials is related to finding the probability of landing on a specific web page. Let's consider the common example of ranking a collection of objects with mutual interactions, which we can measure. In this example, we will look at four teams in a sports league. Their interactions are the games they play against each other, and the measurement would be the results from those games. Regardless of the practical interpretation, the goal is to assign the objects a numerical value, or rank, by which they can be sorted. With sports leagues, this is typically done in a very simple way. Teams are awarded a fixed number of points for the various possible results, win, loss, or tie. In this example, we assign three points for a win, zero points for a loss, and one point for a tie. This approach, however, could introduce controversy, because it does not account for the magnitude of the victory or for the quality of the teams involved. Hence, beating a strong team comfortably earns your team no more points than a last-minute win over the bottom team on the table. We therefore want to consider a ranking method where these factors are considered in the ranking. However, since determining the rankings requires knowledge of the rankings to begin with, such a method is inherently recursive or self-referential. The key aspect here is the self-referentiality. How the magnitude of victory is used to measure the interactions between teams does not fundamentally affect the overall method. Let's see how we can accomplish this using matrix algebra. Let's first set up the approach. Imagine that each team has a fixed number of votes to cast and is asked to divide those votes among all the other teams according to their interactions. This division of votes could be done any number of ways, but all teams have to follow the same rules. Mathematically, it helps to have the votes be non-zero. We can calculate each team's votes by applying a function to its results, or goal difference, against other teams. The output of this function should be bounded, greater than zero, but less than some maximum value. Here, we have chosen a function that asymptotically approaches 0 and 1 as the margin of victory gets larger. It is also symmetric about 0. We'll start with Team C in the bottom left. Team A, the opposing team, won by a goal difference of 1. Therefore, by applying the function, the vote given to Team A by Team C should be 73.1%. In this way, we can repeat the process for each of Team C's games and determine how Team C should distribute its votes to the other teams. We can also use MATLAB to collate the results in a matrix form. Here we create a matrix with the goal differences. Note that this matrix is anti-symmetric. We can then apply the function to calculate the votes for each team. The columns represent the votes cast by a given team. The rows represent the votes cast for a given team. At this point, if we sum the columns, we see that they do not add up to 100%. However, each team should be giving out an equal number of votes. Therefore, we can simply normalize each column so that all the columns add up to 100%. Here we are using the function bsxfun to carry out a column-wise operation 
where we divide each element of A by the sum of its column. Now that we have the breakdown of how each team will distribute its votes to the other teams, we can determine each team's ranking by looking at how many votes were cast for it by summing across the rows. The simplest way to do this is to sum or average all the votes in each row. This would give equal weighting to the votes from each team. However, recall that we would like to give more weight to the votes given by a stronger team. In other words, to weight the votes according to the team rank. We'll first express this as a system of equations given in terms of the rankings. This results in a system of linear equations. Team rank is calculated by multiplying the votes cast by the remaining teams by the rank of each of the remaining teams. These terms are then added together to give the rank. We can then represent this system of equations in matrix vector form. Note that this is not a system of the form AX equals B, where the vector B on the right-hand side is known. Here, the unknown vector R appears on both sides of the equation. Let's rearrange the equation using the identity matrix I and gather the unknown terms R. Now we have the form of matrix times vector equals a known vector. In this case, the right-hand side is the vector of zeros. However, trying to solve this system in MATLAB results in a warning message. R equals zero is a valid, albeit unhelpful, solution to the system. By the theory of linear systems, we know that this is the only solution if the matrix A minus I is non-singular. Therefore, the system has non-trivial solutions only if A minus I is singular. Let's see how we can find a solution to this system using a better approach. By observing the original form of the equation, we can see that it is a special case of the definition of eigenvalues and eigenvectors for the matrix A. Recall that a vector x is an eigenvector of A if Ax equals lambda x for some scalar value lambda, which is the corresponding eigenvalue. The eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix are easily calculated in MATLAB with the eig function. The eigenvalues are on the main diagonal of the matrix D. The corresponding eigenvectors are the columns of the matrix V. Hence, the ranking vector we seek is the eigenvector of A corresponding to an eigenvalue of 1, which is the first column of V. Recall that the scaling of eigenvectors is arbitrary. By default, MATLAB scales eigenvectors to have a length of 1, where length is measured in the standard Euclidean metric, also known as the 2-norm. Given that we interpreted the ranking vector as 1s, therefore, if a matrix has equal row sums, the vector of all 1s is an eigenvector and the value of the row sums is the eigenvalue. In this case, 1. Because 1 is an eigenvalue of A transpose, it is an eigenvalue of A. Of sports teams, we thought of the matrix A in terms of casting votes, a measure of how each team evaluated the performance of its opponents. The same method could be used to rank web pages. In this context, the objects are web pages and their interactions are hyperlinks from one to the other. Therefore, the elements of A can be interpreted as the probabilities of a web surfer in a set of four pages going from one page to another. Because page A links to pages B and D, there is almost a 50% chance of surfing to either of those. But there is also a small probability of randomly going to any other page in the web. A itself, or C in this case. 
let's create the connectivity matrix G from this information. G will map the current distribution of users per web page into a new distribution after each user clicks once and moves to another page. In G, the rows indicate the links to a page, and the columns represent the links from a page. For example, the first row indicates that there is one link to A, and that link is from page D. Thus, if a user is currently on page D, one click will undoubtedly bring them to page A. In MATLAB, we will now create our connectivity matrix G that we previously derived. We are not done with our mapping, however, because there is a probability that the user will type in a URL. Let us assume that there is a 90% probability that the user will follow a link, and thus a 10% probability that an arbitrary page is chosen. We use this data to create our A matrix, which consists of the normalized connectivity matrix and a small probability of choosing the next page arbitrarily. Imagine now that we have the proverbial infinite number of monkeys in front of computers, this time web surfing rather than writing Shakespeare. A vector x could represent how many monkeys are on each page. The product a times x would then represent the distribution of the monkeys after one random connection to another page. In general, the distribution after n steps of random surfing would be given by a to the power of n times x. In this case, we will start with an equal distribution on each page. We can see that this distribution changes after surfing once. It changes further with a second iteration. After surfing for a while, a little over a third of the monkeys will end up on page D, a little over a quarter on page B, and the rest equally split between pages A and C. For this trivial four-page example, calculating powers of A is easy and quick. For larger matrices, however, calculating powers directly is extremely expensive computationally. The eigenvalue decomposition can, however, provide a transformation of coordinates into a space where powers are trivial to calculate. From the definition of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, it follows that if the eigenvectors of A are concatenated together as the columns of a matrix V, then A times V equals V times lambda, where lambda is a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues of A on the diagonal. If V is non-singular, then A and lambda are related by a similarity transform using V. Here we see the matrix A that we previously created. We find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A using the eig function. Now that we have the matrix of eigenvectors V, we can see that to recreate the matrix A, we simply need to multiply V by the eigenvalues in matrix D, then perform right division on this product by V. The result is the matrix A, which we can verify by taking the norm of A minus this result. Similarity transforms can simplify many calculations, such as matrix powers. Here we see that when we square A, the interior terms V inverse times V will cancel one another out, and we will then square lambda. Because lambda is diagonal, lambda squared is calculated by taking the powers of the diagonal elements. Extending this, we see that A to the N can be given as a similarity transform of lambda to the N. This is particularly useful as n gets very large. Firstly, because lambda to the n takes the same effort to calculate as lambda squared. And secondly, because lambda to the n starts to take a very simple form as n gets large. 
Here we see the matrix of eigenvalues. If we factor out the eigenvalue with the largest magnitude, the first diagonal element is 1, and all the remaining elements are less than 1 in magnitude. Consequently, when raised to a large power, all elements except the first one become extremely small. Let's use this to understand the structure of a to the n times x. v inverse times x is a vector. Lambda to the n is almost all zero except for the one one element. So lambda to the n times v inverse x is a vector of almost all zeros except for the first element. Multiplying this by v then results in a vector that is a multiple of the first column of v, the first eigenvector of a. So, for our web page ranking example, any distribution of the randomly web surfing monkeys will, in time, approach the distribution given by the dominant eigenvector. Here, we are creating a random distribution described by the vector x. If we simulate 20 iterations utilizing the similarity transform of A described by the eigenvector and eigenvalue matrices, we will see that this mapping will change the distribution. This distribution is heading towards a steady state, which is described by the first eigenvector, which we are calling R. Once the surfing monkeys have settled to the distribution given by R, further surfing won't change the distribution, as we can see here when we reach a power of 200. Eigenvalue decomposition is used in many different fields and applications. The key is this equation. If the equation used can be written in the form of the general eigenvalue decomposition, then one can apply eigenvalue analysis. At times, the equation will look very close to the definition, as it does here. Often, we will see the equation written as a differential equation, which also utilizes the eigenvalue decomposition. A specific example here is the Schrodinger equation in quantum mechanics. Here we see that H is the Hamiltonian, which is a second-order differential operator. From finding the natural frequencies of vibration and determining flow stability to finding the centrality measures of vertices in spectral graph theory, eigenvalues are widely used in many engineering and science disciplines.